Uh, welcome back. This is the course on stochastic processes and theory of cues. In this lecture, we will look at continuous time stochastic processes. So we categorized a stochastic process based on the nature of the state space of the random variables comprising the process, as well as the index or the parameter, which is more often the time uh, that distinguishes one random variable from the another. So based on that, there can be four kinds of stochastic process. The state space can be discrete or continuous. The uh, index or the time can be discrete or continuous. So far we have looked at all the three kinds of stochastic processes with a different combination of state space, nature of the state space and the parameter. We are going to look at the last variation wherein both the state space as well as the time are continuous in nature. So it is a continuous time, continuous state stochastic processes is what we are going to look at. It's If you generally call it as a stochastic process, uh, unlike stochastic chain, it automatically means that the state space is continuous. In addition, if you explicitly mention that the time is continuous, then uh, it's a continuous time, continuous state stochastic process. We'll more often even drop the word continuous uh, state and simply call it as a stochastic process, wherein we inherently assume that the state space is continuous. An example of it can be the uh, variation of some physical parameter like a temperature or pressure um, against a time. So it's just a parameter that it's a physical quantity that is plotted against time and it's just a function of time but only that the characterization is uh, random in nature. So here the state space which can be the temperature or pressure can take continuous values and we observe it at any arbitrary time uh, and therefore the state space and parameter becomes continuous. More often we are interested in processes which are stationary in the sense that their statistical characterization do not change with time. Because if you allow a process uh, to evolve for a large amount of time and the physical phenomenon governing the generation of the stochastic process have in some sense settled, then the nature, that is the random nature of the stochastic process will not change. And that is what in loose sense we call it as the stationarity. So most of the processes that we encounter in nature are stationary in uh, stationary and therefore we are interested in stationary stochastic processes. When it evolves then the uh, characterization will change with the time. Such evolutions are also important that is the transient evolution of the processes but in most cases in sufficiently long time the station the transient natures will die out and stationary behavior will be exhibited by a typical uh, real world random process and that is why stationary processes are important and because the the uh, the process is stationary which means the statistical characterization do not vary, the random variables uh, at different time points once the stationarity is reached will be uh, identically distributed. They may be independent or not but they become identically distributed. You may be observing at discrete time points or continuous time points but their characterization do not vary. That is 
the PMF in case of the discrete random variable or the PDF in case of the continuous random variables comprising the process have will have the same distribution. Therefore, it becomes easy to characterize them. But the only thing is the uh, distribution as do not change and therefore a single distribution is enough to specify the nature of the random variable. But the relationship between random variables at different time points still needs to be specified. They in a trivial cases they will be independent. In non-trivial cases they may have some relationship. If they have a Markovian property then they will still be easy to characterize because only the most recent uh, prescription is going to be used to predict futures. But in general for a stochastic process for a full characterization we have to give all possible joint distributions of the random variables taken at different time points. That is if you look at the stochastic process at n time points call it as x uh, t1 t2 to tn and the corresponding random variables as x of t1 x of t2 to x of tn their joint distribution will be specified as capital F capital X where this capital X is the random vector with n components x1 to xn where x1 means is a short hand notation for x of t1 and xn is the short hand notation of x of t1. So fx of x of t1 x of t2 to x of tn is the joint distribution of the process uh, with n random variables. You can think of many such random uh, joint distributions okay are taken at arbitrary time points. So for a generic stochastic process all such uh, joint distributions need to be specified which will be a great difficult effort to uh, come up with and again they may vary depending upon the uh, time point at which you sample the random variables. It may be different if the sampling points 1 to n are different. But of course when it comes to stationary stochastic process which we will call it as the strict sense stationary process. We say that the joint distributions are time shift invariant in the sense that if you shift the time points t1 to tn by the same quantity tau then the joint distribution do not vary mathematically fx of x of t1 plus tau x of t2 plus tau all the way to x of tn plus tau is equal to the joint distribution fx of x of t1 to x of tn. So then if this is obeyed for all possible joint distribution that you can think of 2 time, 3 time, 10 time uh, all possible joint distributions then the process is said to be strict sense stationary process. At least then what only matters is that is the number of time points and their separation also matters. That is the time difference between T2 and T1, T3 and T2. Of course those are also will be specified but they are shift invariant. That is the only simplification that we get when we come to strict sense stationary process as compared to a generic stochastic process. Well again many real world processes are strict sense stationary. It is again but strict sense stationarity is difficult to handle to just look for and so on. So we define another kind of stationarity which is exhibited by many real world processes and therefore that would be sufficient in modeling many real world phenomena. That stationarity is called as the white sense stationary uh, stationarity 
those processes are called as wide synth stationary stochastic processes or in short as WSS processes. So it is a weaker uh, form of stationarity and what it says is it only requires that the first moment and the covariance or shift invariant. Okay, that is the first moment is x of t for an arbitrary time t and by covariance you means which is denoted as cxx of t1 comma t2 strictly it is cx of t1 x of t2 of at t1 t2 which this is a short hand notation that we use x is the stochastic process we are looking at two random variables x of t1 and x of t2 and find their covariance. What does it mean? You find their mean mx of t1, mx of t2 and then subtract it from x of t1 and x of t2, multiply it and take the expectation. That is expectation of x of t1 minus mx of t1 multiplied by x of t2 minus mx of t2. So this covariance function we demand it to be shift invariant and then the uh, moment which will denote it as mx at a time t which is nothing but the expectation of x of t for an arbitrary time t they are shift invariant mathematically mx of t is equal to mx of t plus tau for all tau obviously for all t also. So the mean value of the process do not change with time that is what in uh, nutshell we are telling. Then the covariance is shift invariant means if you shift it cxx of t1 t2 is equal to cxs of t1 plus tau t2 minus tau. So only what matters is the time difference between t1 and t2. So we can alternatively the only free variable that we are that will affect the covariance is t1 minus t2 or t2 minus t1 whatever it is. So we can call it we can denote it as cxx of so this would be if you take tau to be minus t2 then the first variable will be t1 minus t2 second variable will be t2 minus t2 which is 0. So both are same if it is time shift invariant and therefore this is the only uh, free parameter that will decide the value of the covariance. So uh, that is another feature of the WSS process. One more important thing is the second moment has to be finite. Look at that you may have a process whose mean value is finite or even be zero but the second moment can be very infinite. For example it may be widely oscillating around the zero taking very large values but still the mean can be zero or it can be finite but this but we don't want the process to take infinite values with finite probabilities and for that which is not a characteristics of the real world process. So we to ensure that we square the process the values x of t the whole squared is always positive. So only when x of t whole squared is finite uh, takes finite values then their expectation will be finite. So this is another um, uh, um, property that we expect WSS process to give a bit. We can see that if the Stitson stationary process has got a finite mean and the finite second moment then automatically it will be a WSS process because the joint distributions are all shift invariant. So which means that if you look at f only take t1 t2 fx of x of t1 x of t2 
that is shift invariant and therefore the covariance where will be the same irrespective of whether we have shifted or not and therefore this will automatically be obeyed so a strict sense stationary process with finite first and second moment is automatically wss but not necessarily the other way now we will uh, use a notation that we will call the time difference between the two time points t1 and t2 used to find the auto covariance as tau cxx of t1 minus t2 comma 0 we will write it as simply of cxx of tau and then without loss of we can it can also be seen that the auto correlation one that is rx of t1 t2 which is the expectation of x of t1 into x of t2 that will also be shift invariant and therefore it will only depend upon the time difference t1 minus t2 so that can also be written as rx of tau well now we will take an example of a wss process one such process is the random telegraph process it derives its name because if you look at uh, um, signal that represents the way the uh, telegraphic codes are being uh, encoded and transmitted then it look like a random telegraph process it can take two only two possible values and uh, plus 1 and minus 1 which we will call it as plus 1 and minus 1 without loss of generality it switches between these values so you may have uh, a small duration or a large duration called as dit and dash through which all characters are being encoded in telegraphic notation but to indicate that the encoding signal has to only take two possible values and based on how we encode the uh, pulse width will uh, keep changing so this telegraph process we will it's a continuous time continuous continuous time process it has what only two states okay plus 1 and minus 1 so we will denote it as x of t t greater than or equal to 0 then the nature of the telegraph signal is that it is a memoryless process continuous time stochastic process with only two distinct values memoryless in the sense that at any given time if you know the value of the process to predict the value it will take at a future time past is not required then the random variables x of t at any given time t has the identical same distribution and it is given for a random telegraph signal it is given as it takes both values plus 1 and minus 1 with equal probability 1 by 2 that is x probability of x of t is equal to plus 1 equal to 1 by 2 that is equal to probability that x of t is equal to minus 1 so at an arbitrary time if you sample the signal here or here or here it may either be taking plus 1 or minus 1 with equal probability but if you sample it to two for time points they are correlated that is if you sample at t1 and t2 the value of the process at t1 x of t1 will affect the value taken at the time t2 because if you sample at close enough point if x of t1 is plus 1 it is likely that x of t2 is also plus 1 if they are closely spaced because the process may not change very uh, quickly okay but if the separation is quite large then you can say that this value will be irrelevant for predicting x of t2 because it might have changed a number of times that is what we 
want to capture when we say how much the process is correlated. Now, one more characterization of the random telegraph process is that if you take two time points t and t plus tau, then the number of times the processor switches the value between plus one and minus one, which we will call it as n of t comma n of t plus tau, n of t and n of t plus tau, that is given by a Poisson prescription. That is if n of t comma t plus tau denotes the number of switches or flips that takes place in a random telegraph process between the time interval t and t plus tau, that number n is of course it is a, a non-negative integer valued one. The number of flips has to be cannot be negative. It can be 0 or 1 or 2 and so on non-negative integer and that value n for it to take some value small n is given by a Poisson PMF. So this is a Poisson random variable. What it means is probability that n of t comma t plus tau to be equal to small n given x of t is equal to some value x. This x can be plus 1 or minus 1. So you know at this time t x of t is x which is plus 1. Then in an interval, how many switches would have taken place? Here two switches. Sometimes there can be five switches and so on. That is given by this prescription. e power of minus lambda tau, lambda tau power n by n factorial. The point to be noted is, the number of switches that happen in this interval does not it does not depend upon the initial value of the process at the time t. Whether it is plus 1 or minus 1 at this time, the number of switches depends only upon the time interval and a quantity lambda, which tells how uh, frequently it switches. Lambda is the rate at which switching takes place and tau is the time interval so lambda tau is the average number of flips that takes place but against the PMF is poison. So the number of flips is e power of minus lambda tau, lambda tau power n by n factorial. So this property depends only upon lambda and tau and independent of the initial value x and of course t also. So we would like to check whether this random telegraph process is WSS, white sun stationary. First we will look at the mean value of the process, mu of t, which is sigma x between the two values of this, this state space, which is plus 1 and minus 1, x into probability that x of t is equal to x. x can take only two possible values, plus 1, minus 1. So at any given time t, probability of x of t is equal to plus 1 is 1 by 2 x of t is equal to minus 1 is 1 by 2. So the expectation is plus 1 into 1 by 2 plus of minus 1 into 1 by 2 which is 0. Which means that it is a mean 0 process. Then the second moment that is x of t the whole square expectation. Then that is plus 1 the whole square into 1 by 2 plus minus 1 the whole square into 1 by 2 which is again 1, which is finite. So the mean is finite. The second moment is also finite. So basically we have satisfied these two uh, conditions. The only thing that you have to look at that, whether the auto covariance is uh, time shift invariant. But note that the mean value is 0. Therefore, the auto covariance becomes auto correlation because if you look at here, uh, where is it? Yeah, here mx of t1 is 0, mx of t2 is equal to 0. So, the auto covariance is nothing but expectation of x of t1 into x of t2, that is rx of tau. So, that is what we have to find out.
So Rx uh, between at T1 and T2, which is expectation of X of T1 into X of T2. So if you know X of T1, X of T2 can be some other value. What is the probability that all possible variations of X of T1 and T2 we have to take? And then we have to multiply values of X of T1 and T2, multiply it by those probability and sum it over all possibilities. X of T1 can take four, two possible values, plus one, minus one. T2 can be two possible values. Together, there are four possible combinations these two can take. So, what essentially we have to do is that we have to sum it over all these things. Suppose both of them are plus one, then plus one into plus one into probability that x of t1 is equal to plus one, x of t2 is equal to plus one. Plus the other combination, x of t1 is plus one, x of t2 is minus one into the corresponding probability. And x of t1 is minus one and x of t2 is plus one into the corresponding probability. Finally, both being minus one into the corresponding probability. Now, if you look at this one, this is plus one, this is also plus one, this and this are minus ones in the multiplication. Now, if you look at this one, here x of t1 is plus one, x of t2 is pl plus one. We saw that the value taken by the process at the starting point, that is t1, is not going to affect the number of flips that takes place. Starting from plus one, if you want x of t2 to be plus one, then it means that there has to be even number of flips that should take place. Because starting from plus one, one flip will change it to minus one, one more flip will bring it back to plus one, third flip will bring it back to minus one, fourth will bring it back to plus one and so on. So starting from plus one, if you want plus one at the time t2 also, it means there has to be even number of flips. Similarly, starting from minus one, if you want minus one at t2, between t1 and t2, there has to be even number of flips. So these two corresponds to the case where the number of flips that happens is even. That is, any value of even n is allowed for both x of t1 and x of t2 to take the same sign. So we have to add up all those poison PMFs for all even n's. Whereas x of t1 is plus 1, x of t2 is minus 1 or the other way means the sign changes, which means that there has to be odd number of flips. So all values of n which are odd can give rise to these two cases. So to find the possibility, incidentally, both these two are plus one also. So we can simply tell that it is two times n of t2, this, the, if you take these two cases and then add up, this is plus one and plus one becomes two. Two times this or this, which both corresponds to the case where the number of flips is even. And these two cases, where if you, this multiplication is minus one, minus one. So it is basically minus two. So we have taken a two outside, minus one into the case where the number of flips is odd. So which means that if you add up this for odd cases, you will get this value probability. For all even, uh, even n will give this odd n will give this one. If you do so and then multiply it and then find it, you can see that it is will lead to a quantity which is e power of minus 2 lambda tau. Which means that it is only a function of tau which is t2 minus t1. So it means that the auto correlation as well as the auto covariance it depends only upon the time difference tau. And therefore, all three properties of the WSS process is obeyed by the random telegraph process. So it is Whiteson stationary. 
so we will stop at our discussion on stationary nature of continuous time stochastic process with this thank you